again. It's a red stick. Good morning, boys and girls, actually. It's not a good evening, it is a good morning. Um, I'm down the garage, nice and early, on a Tuesday morning. It is this morning, of all things. Um, and this week, uh, this week is all things Nova. So I've taken this week off of work with the express intention of getting as much done on the Nova as I possibly physically, humanly can. So, you know, as much Red Bull as I can consume and as much work on the Nova as I can do, basically. Um, so, yeah, we're gonna do, I'm gonna try and do a video every day this week. Uh, as soon as I'm down here every week, I'm trying to do a video every day this week. Uh, it may or may not happen, but you know, if it does, it does. Um, and to be honest, by Friday, you guys might actually be bored of watching a, a Nova video every day of the week, but we're gonna try it anyway, because you know, why not? Um, so, first things first today, let's have a little update on where we got to in regards to the other evening. So the other evening, we got everything rewired. Um, got everything rewired. I've now got spark. I've now got the fuel pump working. Um, there is still an issue with the injectors for some reason, um, but I have got everything rewired and I'll just show you what we've got inside here. So now everything comes, excuse the mess, got to tidy up, but everything now comes through here um, and is mounted on this kick panel, little carbon fiber kick panel there. So you've got the ECU mounted there, you've got four individual fuses for each individual um, supply, so there's a fuse for the ECU and the dash and all the gauges, uh, there's a fuse for the um, coil pack, there's a fuse for the injector banks and there is a fuse for the fuel pump, all separate, all nicely um, split out like they should be um, and then you've got two relays there that control everything else, so one relay controlling the fuel, fuel pump fuel pumps plural because there's two um, and then one that controls everything else which links into uh, the key switch up here links into the standard ignition so you turn that on that relay comes on turns the ECU and all that blah, 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 blah. anyway so that is all in as it should be ECU controlling the fuel pump um, so that it pulses and everything else la -de -la -de -da. so that is all done it cranks it turns over we get RPM signal like I said, have got an issue with the injector uh, with the injectors. Um, I don't know. I've got to have a look. More than likely, it's probably a power issue. I'll find it. Um, but that's not what we're going to do today because there's, it's daytime and I can make as much noise as I want. Um, so I'm going to carry on getting the rest of the front and everything put together and a bit of fabrication and stuff. Um, but it does. If you put a squirt of brake clean down the intake, uh, it does run and it makes all pressure and everything seems to be good for the 15 seconds or so that it runs on brake clean. So happy about that anyway right let's get on to the thing that we're going to be doing today I understand because the lights are there I do usually have these doors open during the day so I can have a bit of daylight in it but it's freezing so I've shut the doors to try and keep a bit of warmth in not that there's a lot of warmth in there anyway but but there you go so first things first then obviously you've seen we've put the new cross member in um, I need to cut the new cross member which seems like sacrilege but I do because uh, I need a little bit more extra space here for the boost hoses to go through. Um, so I need to quickly modify that to make that nice and uh, nice and neat. And then what I need to do is remount the position of all of this, so the intercooler, the radio, I need to remount all of that. So the way it was before, this was mounted off the bottom of, uh, off the bottom of here on some questionable brackets. I don't know if I've still got them or not. I don't know if I just threw them straight in the bin. Let me have a look and see. Yeah, so originally the intercooler was mounted on these, which like that kind of bolted underneath something like, I don't know, something like that. 
but basically yeah so that was kind of what was holding up before a little bit of aluminium now obviously not very sturdy and that's a big intercooler it weighs a fair amount so we'll be getting rid of those and making something a little bit more sturdy but the other reason now the other reason is science um, one radiator let me just go and get the fan do, 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 do. watch out McFarland science I'm coming for you Dr. Bodgetall, that's what I should be called, Dr. Bodgetall. Right, so, the reason we're gonna be moving all of this is science. Now, the way this was set up is the, and I'm gonna to to try and balance this all whilst I film it, so you will have to bear with me. So, the way this was set up is the intercooler sat on the front of the car like this. The fan was then wedged in between the two of them with the radiator behind, like so, all right? And obviously that was mounted, that was mounted on there. So this was roughly how it was set up in the car. Now, the problem with that, as I've said, was science. So I've drawn a diagram. This is the original setup. So this is your intercooler. There's your radiator with the fan mounted on the front of it. So what happens when you're driving along is the air comes in here, which is this arrow, goes through the intercooler, which is these three dots, and then it wants to take the easiest path, of, so the path of least resistance. So basically, rather than then carrying on through the cooling rad, what happens is it, it splays out the edges. It takes the easiest route, which is basically the big gap that's left here. So you then don't get any air, any velocity going through the radiator. And then you end up with overheating issues, basically. So what we're gonna do is this here. So as you can see, intercooler, radiator, and then we're gonna move the cooling fans from the front of the radiator to the back of the radiator. So everything sandwiched together. So basically the air comes through here by the time it leaves the intercooler, it's got nowhere else to go but through the cooling rad. And then you get the best efficiency out of your radiator as you can with a front mounted intercooler sitting right in front of it. So essentially what it's gonna look like is something like, in a second, balancing everything, so you're gonna have to forgive me. What it's gonna look like, and it's not gonna be this fan, we're gonna get two small, smaller fans because obviously the turbo's in the way but it's going to look something like that so that everything's sandwiched together and you get the idea you get the uh, you get the science so rather than just waffling on about science and everything for the rest of this episode because that would be quite boring wouldn't it um, what i'm going to do i've got some square bar stock um i'm going to get these cut i'm then going to make a mount like a little halo hoop that's going to come off of these front chassis rails it's going to come out and it's going to come around um, and then that's gonna mount the bumper because the bumper has to have tabs here to be mounted. So it's gonna mount the bumper on each end and then the front mount's gonna mount off the bottom of that in the middle and then the radiator's gonna sit in the, in the cross, uh, cross member at the back like it was designed to do in the first place. So stick you on a time lapse then and, uh, and we'll have a go, see what, we can, uh, see what we can make fit, see what we can make happen and uh, go from there. Right, let's crack on.
boys and girls. <coughs> we have one support crossbar. Right, let's see. Let me show you what we got. Let me show you what we got. Right. Right, no battery in the camera. On a side note, if anyone else has had issues with their GoPros, with the batteries just dying, like completely randomly, like that one there still has 55% on it and it just come up low battery and shut the camera off. Um, yeah, leave me a comment in the section below. I don't know whether to ring GoPro and ask them to send me new batteries or what the problem is. Let me know if you know the answer. Anyway, right, as I was saying, we've got this crossbar made up. I've welded on these filmer tabs that's still hot. Um, I've welded on these 3mm tabs um, onto there. I do like welding, nice clean 3mm and box section. It's, it makes life so much easier. You're not blowing holes in rusty thin panels, that's for sure. So uh, yeah, got those welded on. Now I was gonna weld on some tabs in the corners here to pick up the bumper supports. But to be honest with you, this is so, well, I've done this out of three mil to make sure it's nice and thick and sturdy. It's kind of, it's gonna pick up the bumper anyway. So I'm kind of thinking I won't need to do the bumper supports in each corner. They can just, they'll be picked up on the front here. So like tie the bumper, the intercooler and everything all into one. Don't know, we're gonna bolt it up and see how much flex is in it. And then I'll decide on that one. But yeah, pretty, uh, pretty happy with that to come out. All I'm gonna do is just drill a couple of holes in the side here or line it up so I can drill a couple of holes in the side so I know what's going in where and then I'll get some rib nuts, we'll put some rib nuts to the body and then this will just bolt through into some rib nuts um, and should theoretically hold everything really nice and tight and sturdy so right let me uh, drill some holes, get this in the car, catch you in a second right then before I put, I've opened the door because yeah, you know, it wasn't getting any warm in the workshop and I thought I'd enjoy the daylight anyway so before I put the bumper back on I thought I'd show you how it all mounts up as you can see it because once the bumper goes on you can't really see it but that's how it mounts it looks like it sticks out quite a far way but to be fair this bumper sticks out a really long way to, to house the intercooler which is like four inches thick or three and a half inches thick so sticks out 80 mil from here comes in and it sits it's like I've notched it into here just need to clean this up a little bit but notched it into the bumper so it's nice and sturdy and we've got three mil tabs on here as we discussed I'm going to drill through those and then that will bolt through the bumper. So the bumper will sit on top of these, the intercooler will sit underneath, rubber isolation mount on top and the bottom, which is essentially just gonna be a washer, uh, rubber washer. And then that's gonna that'll take up any vibration in the bumper and the intercooler. And uh, everything should be fairly well, fairly well mounted. I've messed up this hole, it's slightly off. So I'm gonna take it back off again. I'll move that hole over, it's about half a hole over somehow. Must have, uh, must have had the drill at a funny angle when I drilled it out, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Anyway. Uh, yeah, that's that. Get it all matted up, drill this, make sure it all fits, then take it off and paint it. I'm just going to primer it and put some black on it. I've got some primer and I've got, I think I've got half a can of black somewhere, something like that. So I'm just going to primer it and black it so that it doesn't uh, doesn't rust away behind the bumper. Um, but I reckon, I reckon we're onto a winner with this. And then after that, I'll just uh, I'll make sure I can still fit my boost hoses because the boost hoses have still got to fit through there, uh, which if they don't fit will be a bit of a nightmare actually. But I'm sure. I'm sure they will, sure they will. Anyway, right, crack on. reason why that bolt hole didn't fit because it was in upside down I marked out where my tabs were and I didn't think to think of the fact that the front of it is slightly off center and I've welded the tabs on the wrong side of the bar <laughs> shit so turned it around these two fit fine tabs now line up with the holes like they should do but the problem is they're on the underside of the bar, not the top of the bar, like I had planned. Which um, now means the intercooler will sit lower. Uh, which, which is less than ideal, should we say. It's less than ideal. The only thing I can think of, rather than having to cut everything apart and do it again, the only thing I can think of is, because let me show you, let me show you what will happen. Let's bring you in for a closer view. Right, let me show you what will happen with this the way it is. So, the way I've measured it out, 
the intercooler would have sat nice and flush up with the top here like that. Uh, but now the intercooler is going to sit down quite low in the. Uh, it only just fits inside the bumper. Let's just wedge it in like that for now. It's going to sit down really low inside here, uh, which from back here looks pony. So what I'm thinking is possibly rather than completely redo it all again, if I cut bigger holes in these tabs, if I cut bigger holes in the tabs, and then the, the these bits can sit through the tab, and then I'll make up a little collet spacer to go in the top to pin it all down, but it'll still you'll still be able to see the tabs. I want the tabs to be hidden inside the recess of the bumper. Let this be a lesson, boys and girls. Oh, hello. Let this be a lesson to you. Always tack it and fit it rather than think, yeah, that's fine, I'm just going to throw it in. Because that would be a nightmare to redo. I basically would have to start from scratch now. Because trying to cut those tabs off would be a nightmare. What a cock. Right, I'm going to sort out some way of sorting this out. And I'll see you in a minute when I've either sorted it out or completely remade the whole thing. A few moments later. Right, looks a bit different. There you go, what do you reckon? It's a big old intercooler to fit in there, that's for sure, but it does fit. So, basically what I ended up doing was to get round, I didn't change my issue here, uh, I didn't change this, we deal with this, basically what I did was drill a much bigger hole so that the bung, you see better on that one probably, so that the, the mount and the weld fit all the way through um, and then what I've got at the moment, I've got a couple of hub nuts in, uh, hub nuts in there, just spacing it out. Uh, but then what I'm, so what I do is I'll replace those just with a little bit of aluminium stock. Um, I haven't got any Ali, Ali stock that big, but I'll get some Ali stock made up, so I'll make up some spacers to sit in there. And then what we'll do is just get some neoprene rubber, which will sit between the Ali and the and the pad there, just to stop any uh, cross metal contamination and corrosion. Because again, science: if you put Ali straight up against steel, it will corrode. Um, something to do with the electrons I believe but anyway uh, yeah so basically problem solved and the thing is there's nothing mounting the bottom yet I still need to do that basically there's two little holes that go through the fiberglass probably what I'm going to do is just build a, a little supporting bar in the bottom there I'm not actually going to fix it to anything other than the bumper but just a supporting bar just to take the wiggle out of it but the, the bumper is solid not going anywhere uh, I've got the headlights in I dropped the bonnet down just so I can check for shut lines and get an overall look for it Radiator is in, but I haven't mounted it or drilled any holes yet. It needs to go down. Um, I did want to try and move it forward, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So I might try and make a shroud instead so that we keep our principle that we discussed over there. Um, but I need where's to turn up with the grill first because I need to see where this grill sits before I put that in. Because if, it if I put that in there, the grill won't fit uh, because looking at it, I think it needs to go back about another, well, the width of the rad again. Um, but we're kind of very close. Well, we're actually touching there where it is at the moment. So, uh, yeah, not the best place to have rooted the wastegate, to be honest, to have built that manifold. Um, it's kind of, yeah, why they would put it there, I don't know. Um, yeah. Personally, I think I would have sat the turbo a bit lower and put that underneath that runner. That would have worked a lot better, but there you go. Um, anyway, right, that is all in. I've got my boost piping into a point. Um, this side you can see I just need a coupling for down there to come off of that aluminium U-bend and that's that cold hot side done. Uh, cold side is that weird shaped pipe there basically that just goes kind of up there and in there. So yeah basically that is that. Uh, I can't do any more on the front until Wes gets here so what I'm going to do is crack on with some other little jobs that need doing. Uh, one of which is if you look at these the steering rack's a bit gritty. Anyway, right. If you look at these uh, castle nuts, you can see they're way too far back for the pin. That is because when you use these F28 gearboxes um, and convert them to two wheel drive, you have to have one of these little spacers put in the back behind the CV joint, and then one of these big spacers, as you would normally have, goes behind this castle nut on the front. And then we can bang a split pin in there, and that is that done. So that'll be another little job ticked off the list. 
So I'm going to do that whilst I'm waiting for the uh, grill to arrive. Um, and then I will. I was going to need a new ball joint as well. It's a brand new ball joint, but look at that, that split. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that whilst I'm waiting for the grill to arrive. Then I'm probably going to have a bit of lunch and I'll catch you guys in a second. More moments later. Got the front wheels all sorted. So uh, these are all sorted as they should do. There's quite a lot of resistance in them, to be honest. Not in the bearing. I feel like that's in the gearbox. Um, so that one been something we need to look at. It's definitely not in the bearing. I, I checked because the first thing I thought was, well, I've done that bearing up way too tight then, and it's not rolling. Um, so it's either the brake disc binding um, or the resistance in the gearbox. I didn't have the right size split pins, so I have got to get split pins for it, but they're on. I got the stub conversion done. They're all bolted up nice as I should do. I did the backs. Um, the backs had two sets of spacers on, which I think is questionable, so I took the skinny ones out and just left the other ones on. Still got a really nice fitment, to be honest with you. Uh, got those converted to stub as well. And then, what I did whilst I was waiting, was I got the dash all sorted and back in, um, and I wired in the cutoff switch, so let's climb the car. So, yeah, like I said, uh, Put some seats in here, it'd be a bit more comfy, wouldn't it? Uh, right, okay, so yeah, cut off switch is now wired in here, like that, and then everything is on the key still, like that. Turn the key, fuel pump primes, everything comes to life. Uh, I've got the switch, there's a hole here, so I've got a switch mounted. We're going to put the fan on a switch uh, rather than be controlled by the ECU so that it can be like sorted out all the time, you know, it can be turned on and off as and when. Um, there was actually already a hole there for something, so. Uh, just reused it, it's not wired up yet. I need to wire all that up, uh, put another relay in, etc. Um, but yeah, got that all sorted. Got the fuel gauge reconnected so that now reads correctly. Uh, I got the blowtorch out, I got the blowtorch directly on both water temperature sensors, they worked fine. Didn't do the all temperature sensor because that's quite a delicate one, I didn't want to destroy it. Um, and yeah, I think I basically just got the glove box mounted back in there, got the dash mount back there, get some screws for these. Um, and then that is, I've got to sort that out, the relay stuff on the indicator. Well, I think it might be the way it's wired, to be honest. Definitely need to check that one out. Um, so yeah, basically, the way I've got this set up is the kill switch kills everything that is ECU and engine related. Everything that was standard loom, so the lights, etc, etc, all stay on. Uh, are all still on the key as they should be um, as factory now I know strictly speaking everything from the battery should come straight through the kill switch so that it should kill everything um, but that's the way I've wired it for now so that everything I don't have to touch anything stock that can all say stock um, it also means that you haven't got to worry about the alternator overcharging when you kill a switch etc um, but basically yeah so just to prove that it works to you not that I need to but you know turn that on fuel pump comes on basically kills everything so it kills the fuel pump kills the spark kills all the engine stuff um, as it should do so in the event of an emergency we can shut it down nice and quickly and it's nice nice and reasonably reasonably uh, it's nice and accessible right next to the steering wheel um, yeah so I need to get that mounted back up there um, but I'll do that oops so just behind me broke I'll do that another day um, Let's have a recap then, shall we? So yeah, basically, I've got all of that done. Um, tomorrow, we'll be welding in the bits for the roll cage. Um, that will be tomorrow's video. So we've got to take out these plates at the front uh, and just take, obviously, get the sound deadening, clean it all up, get those plates welded in. Uh, I've got to weld in some boxes at the back. So we'll do that in tomorrow's video. And then, uh, and then we've got to try and sort out the injector issue. Um, I'll tell you what I am going to do to end this video off. Let's hear it run, shall we? Yeah, let's hear it run. Right, what I'm going to do to end this video off. So we have got the injector problem, but that's not to say that I can't quickly fire it up on brake clean so that you can all hear it run. Because everyone wants to hear these sort of things run, don't they? Right, give me a second. So basically, this is how we know it's an injector fault. Spray a load of that down now let it vaporize in the chamber and when I give it a kick over engine should run
something sounded like it um, was catching, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but you can see it runs. It also idles at about 2,500 RPM, 3,000 RPM. Um, that's the other thing that actually connected up. Rev gauge, so at least you know the rev counter works. Um, so, yeah, that idle is way too high. So if I've got a vacuum leak somewhere or the throttle stop needs adjusting, I'll work that one out at some point. But you see where we're at. So basically, if we had an injector, it would run. Uh, it also makes 60, 70 pounds of oil pressure cold, which is good. So it's got really good oil pressure cold. Should probably make 40, 30 at idle when it's, uh, when it's warm. So we know that much is good. I'm going to stand here and just uh, warm my hands up on the very small amount of warmth coming out of these uh, out of these intake runners right like comment subscribe see you tomorrow